Yep, I'm doing the quarantine haircut thing. I haven't gotten a haircut since February, March. Uh, we're, we're just gonna see what happens with it. Might keep it for a while, might cut it all off soon. I don't know yet. Hi, I'm Jackson Bird, and today I want to talk about things I was able to do when I lived as a girl and woman, but that society is not as cool with now that people see me as the man that I am. I feel like we trans men talk a lot about the privileges that we now have as men, because that's a really important conversation to have. And I am making that video too, it'll go up soon, or if you are watching this far in the future, just click here to go watch it. But we don't as often talk about the flip side of things. You know, even though I have more privilege now, there are several things that I can't really do anymore. And I'm not talking about gender expression kind of stuff, really. Like, I am a man and I could wear makeup or paint my nails if I wanted to. Would it be received completely differently than when I did those things while presenting as a woman? Yeah, in most circles it would. But apart from the fact that I'm speaking from my own experiences and makeup and that kind of thing is not something that I have done as a man or really have any desire to do right now, I do want to focus more so on societal expectations and sort of interpersonal relationships, like how things are perceived based on what gender you are perceived to be. And now again, this is just from my perspective and experiences. It is definitely not universal for all trans people. And I would love to hear other trans people's experiences in the comments, so leave those below. And also, even though I'm gonna be saying all these things that I can't do anymore first, some of them maybe I shouldn't have been doing as a girl anyways. Second, I'm not complaining about not being able to do these things. Like, Complaining about society, yeah, maybe a little, but not to the extent that I wish I hadn't transitioned or anything like that. And finally, my perceived inability to do any of these things in no way lessens or negates the incredible amount of male privilege that I now have. White, able-bodied, usually cis, straight, passing male privilege. These are just some of my observations about the different ways our society treats men and women, or people they perceive to be men and women. And honestly, most of these things still boil down to the ways in which women have all kinds of unreasonable expectations on them and are not afforded the same safety and freedoms as men. See also other marginalized genders, but in slightly different ways. And before I dive in, I just want to take a minute to to talk about today's sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. Now, as you can see, I am growing out the quarantine stash and beard, but even growing out facial hair requires maintenance. You know, I gotta shave and trim up all the extra bits to keep it looking relatively neat. Plus, Dollar Shave Club doesn't just sell shaving products. They've got me covered for all of my grooming needs, shower, oral care, deodorants, and also shaving. Dollar Shave Club recently sent me their ultimate shave starter set, which includes the executive handle and blades, one ounce tubes of Dr. Carver's prep scrub, Dr. Carver's shave butter, and Dr. Carver's post shave dew. And these have all been lifesavers for me lately because with my facial hair growing in thicker and the hot weather and mask knee, my skin has been a wreck. So having these products to exfoliate and hydrate and soothe my skin has been so nice. Dollar Shave Club also recently introduced sunscreen and an acne eraser, which I can't wait to check out. And if you want your own ultimate shave starter set, you can go to dollarshaveclub.com slash jacksonbird to get it for only $5. And you can round out the rest of your grooming routine by adding any of their other high quality products like that sunscreen when you do that as well. After that, the restock box ships full-sized products at regular price. So again, just go to dollarshaveclub.com slash jacksonbird to get that $5 offer. Link in the description box. And thank you to Dollar Shave Club for supporting my channel. All right, so things I could do as a girl, but not as a guy. This first one is particularly unique to me, but burping. I burp a lot. Always have. The number of burps that get cut out of videos. I should do a super cut one day, except I don't think I saved the footage. There's a great story about my mom grocery shopping with me when I was barely a year old and I'm like sitting in the little front of the cart and I let out this huge grown man burp and everyone in the store like whipped their heads around to look at my mom in shock. And she was like, it was the baby. But then of course she looked like a total a-hole blaming the baby for a clearly adult burp. So anyways, 
Yeah, I burp a lot. And like, I can control it, but not quite as much as most people because it happens a lot. And yes, it is rude and gross no matter what gender you are. But a lot of people received it with a kind of humor or even like awe because this tiny little woman was making these huge noises. So I guess there was kind of like an entertainment factor to it before, but now I'm just straight up gross and rude. Which, like, fair. Here's an example that might be a little bit more common, however. Complimenting women. I feel like women are always hyping each other up and like asking, where'd you get that top? And like, OMG, your hair looks so good. And I definitely leaned hard into that. I learned how to communicate in that way so that I could fit in with women when I didn't always feel like I did. So especially earlier on in transition, it was really difficult to stop that habit because now it's a delicate line. Like if I'm trying to compliment a woman who I'm not romantically involved with, it can easily come off as objectifying or if I swing too hard in the other direction by trying to like compliment an item of clothing to avoid sounding objectifying, then sometimes I feel like I sound pretty gay, which is fine, but not always what I'm going for. My bigger concern though is making women in my life feel maybe uncomfortable by discussing their physical attributes, even if I think it's in a complimentary kind of way. And it's just weird because like what used to be my way of diffusing tension and fitting in is now a potential way to cause conflict and seem a little creepy. Speaking of creepy, I definitely have to be cognizant of like not walking too close to women, crossing onto the other side of the street at night and not like accidentally staring at them or anything. I mean, just now, like right before shooting this video, I was walking around the block and I started passing this woman. She was like coming in the opposite direction and I thought maybe she was a friend of mine. Important clarification here, I am really bad at recognizing faces, even of people I have known for years. And the masks, aren't helping. So I was lingering my eyes on her longer than is acceptable because I was trying to figure out if she was my friend and also thinking like I would maybe catch her eye so that we would stop and say hi. But she kept going without stopping to say hi and it definitely got to the point where I was maybe making her uncomfortable by looking at her for so long. So yeah, I hope I didn't creep that woman out too much and hopefully it wasn't my friend who I then must have not said hi to. <sighs> Anyways, like, yeah, that still would have been socially awkward even if I were read as a woman in that scenario. It was just an awkward moment. But I know that having a man stare you down can be a frightening thing. I remember that feeling and I hate thinking that I might cause another person to feel that way. So I try to be aware and considerate of how close I am to women I'm sharing a walkway with and not accidentally staring in their direction when I'm like staring off into space or whatever. And also, why are so many t-shirts with interesting phrases on them that I would like to read printed right over people's breasts? I could care less about your breasts, ma'am. I was trying to read the quote on your shirt that by the way, the graphic designer totally should have made in a more legible font. No, but seriously, I just, I don't read the shirts anymore. I don't wanna make someone uncomfortable. Like even if my intent is more innocent, like they don't know that. Continuing on this fun thread of seeming creepy out in public, I feel the need to avert my eyes anytime children are around. I, okay, that, that's like a little extreme of a way to phrase it, but I never before felt like a creep or got glares from parents when I would smile or wave at their babies. And now I do. I freaking love babies and children. I think they're adorable and super cool, but their parents often see me as like a potential predator, which is also fair. I mean, yes, predators come in all genders and presentations. And frankly, I am a tiny young looking guy who I don't think looks particularly intimidating, but also like, White men are kind of the most dangerous demographic in our country right now. Definitely the one I'm the most scared of, so I get it. It's also just like sad that we see a woman and assume she's nurturing and we see a man and we assume he's a predator. It's a bummer but it's also our reality and I don't want any moms coming after me. And continuing on this thread of double standards and the different ways that we unfairly treat different genders in society, I definitely think I had more of a right to speak about feminist issues when I presented as a woman. And this one is still tough for me because I have worked professionally in the activist world. Like I know a lot about feminist ideals and policies and I lived in the world as a woman and as a girl. I know firsthand what a lot of these things feel like, 
And yet I can't really say some of those things as a man. I mean, no, certainly like in men's spaces, I can call them out on sexist behavior. I can be a good ally to women and other marginalized genders. But there have been a few times when I've heard a woman saying something kind of sexist, like some internalized misogyny kind of stuff. And I want to maybe explain that that's not a great thing to say, but I also don't want to mansplain feminism to a woman. And there's also the times where I'm in an environment where people don't know that I'm trans, but a discussion about something like feeling unsafe walking home at night or reproductive rights or, you know, periods or having been in brownies comes up, like things I have to contribute to those discussions, like stories I might want to share, but in that moment I have to decide to out myself or not. One caveat I might add though is that the older I get and the longer that I've been living in the world as a man, the less of those things that I can relate to. There are experiences that women in my life are having as we age that I simply don't have. So most of the time I don't have anything to contribute to in those kinds of discussions and I am just listening and learning. But sometimes here and there I have something and it's weird that I can't share it anymore or that there's just like a lot of baggage with it if I do. All right, this next one is kind of weird, but I feel like especially in my early 20s, because people are sexist and maybe kind of don't expect as much out of young women as they should, people seemed a lot more impressed with my professional and academic achievements than after I transitioned. So I transitioned at 25 and as soon as I did, I felt like now people expected more of me and therefore were not as impressed with things I had done. I mean, I think the expectations were also different. Maybe, like at least for me. Like as a young woman, it's like, oh, you're getting out there and you're making your own way. That's so inspiring. And then as a guy, it's like, you're pushing 30. Why don't you have a stable job so you can buy a house and provide for a family? Or actually more often than that, I think because I was perceived as much younger than I was, so like strangers usually thought that I was a high schooler. So instead of, young woman kicking ass at her early career, people saw teenage boy up to no good. I got way more like, in public, authority figures yelling at me and men trying to bestow wisdom on me. Like I think society really just sees teenage boys as lost and looking for trouble. And like, yeah, a lot of teenagers of all genders are those things some of the times, but it was really revealing to me how many folks are just ready to assume the worst about teenagers, and especially teenage boys, instead of trying to see their potential and, and guide them. Another small thing, I definitely don't get free drinks anymore. I mean, I didn't always like it when it happened because, uh, but it definitely happened way more often. And I remember that being a thing I was gonna be sad about losing. It's been fine. I'm kind of related to that. I don't know how much I did this before, but I feel like there were at least a few times that maybe I saw an attractive dude and like, you know, made eyes at him. I would definitely not do that to anyone now of any gender. I think if I did it to a dude and we were not in an explicitly LGBTQ plus space, I would probably get beat up. And if I did it toward a woman or any other marginalized gender, I think I would either annoy or creep them out. Like much of this video, I'm probably exaggerating how some of these scenarios might play out. That's the kind of socially anxious person I am, so. <laughs> Similarly to all of that, I am very bisexual. I like people of all genders, but on social media and among my friends, I have realized that I usually only make comments about being attracted to men. I might do a bigger video unpacking this at some time because I feel like there's sort of a lot to say here, but basically in short, I feel uncomfortable making comments about the attractiveness of women or other marginalized genders because again, it just feels really close to objectification. And as a man, I feel like there's a sort of systemic power imbalance there and a history of men using women for their bodies. Whereas objectifying a man's body doesn't seem as bad because it doesn't come with all of that baggage. And I know that's a delicate line with a lot to unpack, but like, I don't know, me admiring Chris Evans's butt, AKA America's ass, kind of comes across as a little more funny which is maybe also a commentary on homophobia in our society, but you know, versus saying the same thing about Brie Larson's butt, which immediately coming from a man sounds extra sexualized. Now, when I presented as a woman, if I said anything about Chris Evans being attractive, that would just be expected of me. 
And if I said Brie Larson was attractive, it would either be the funny, not taken seriously thing, or subversive in some way, but not disrespectful to Brie Larson. And there is a flip side of this, which is in all men's spaces where people don't know that I'm queer or trans, I am super nervous about revealing my attraction to men. And again, before it would have been expected by our heteronormative society to, for me to be into men, but now I'm outing myself if I mention being attracted to a guy seriously. Like, I'll throw out comments sometimes that seem like I'm going for, you know, an edgy, progressive joke about a male celebrity being attractive or something, but not make it obvious that I'm seriously into a dude. I'll never forget the first time I realized this, because an important thing to know is that before I transitioned, I basically identified as and presented as a straight girl. I mean, I knew that I wasn't, but I didn't ever have to deal with homophobia out in the world. And so shortly after I came out as a man, I faced it for the first time. I was at... I was at a photo shoot, actually, um, and it was a photo shoot of all men, mostly male crew, and they were trying to get us to just like laugh and smile and like look like we're having a good time. So someone on the crew was like, talk about your favorite celebrity crushes. And all the dudes were like straight in there, listing off women. And I was about to say some male celebrity before I caught myself and was like, ooh, that would out me as being into men. I don't think I wanna do that right now, so I better come up with a woman celebrity that I'm into. And all I could think of was the honest answer of Kristen Stewart. The queerest trying to be straight answer ever. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's happened a few times because I don't always wanna out myself. Whether for safety or maybe some internalized homophobia or just like not wanting to make it a whole conversation. And that's not something that I had to think about previously. Though I know that one's kind of unique to me. Trans people with different sexualities might have had a different or opposite experience. And I've got one more. And this last one is kind of less about how we treat women versus men in society and more about cis versus trans people. It's also not really as relevant to me these days, but basically casual dating or hooking up was definitely easier before I came out and transitioned. You know, I didn't have to think about how I would disclose my identity or explain my body. And like, yeah, I mean, ultimately it's great to have to communicate with a partner earlier on and like there's all kinds of upsides and benefits to that communication, but it is scary. And it's something that I never had to think about before I transitioned. And we could extrapolate a lot of things out from there, all the different ways that life is more challenging for trans people to navigate, but this video is already super long and that is straying a bit from the main topic. So let's end it there. I'm sure there are so many things that I'm forgetting about just from my own experiences even. And I would love to hear your experiences, whether you are trans, you know, things that you noticed society started disapproving of when you began being read one way or the other, or if you're cis, just like differences you're aware of and how people get treated based on the gender they're perceived to be. And again, I am posting a video on the opposite side of this later in the month. So look out for that. You can subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when it is up. And hey, also, my book just came out in paperback! Look, it's all like soft and papery. Won't hurt as bad if you throw it at someone. Don't throw books at people. It has an extra reader's guide at the back for like classrooms or book clubs, and also I edited a lot more than I was probably supposed to. So if you want an updated version of my book or if you've been waiting to buy a cheaper version, if you want to gift it to someone that you think needs it, go to the link in the description box or on the screen or whatever and get a copy or 12. And thank you again to Dollar Shave Club for supporting my channel. You can go to the link to check out the $5 Ultimate Shave Starter Set. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you next time.